And I want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. And I am going to be putting up a vlog every day for as long as I can. So I'm not sure how many videos I'm going to upload. I've already uploaded maybe three or four videos. So you won't see a Vlogmas intro to it. But I thought it would be fun to see how many days in a row could I upload a video. Some days you may just get a quick tip. And other days you may get... A full video like I have the Houston videos I need to upload I've done the Marshall's dry good haul which is already there and I have a quote block already completed so I'm just going to add a vlogmas number to the end of those videos just to see how many days in December can I upload a video so let's get started with today today we're going to do the hot dog pillowcase method and I am making these for my quilt guild. They're requesting these for a charity project. And so I thought that I would just share it with you. So let's get started. What I received from my guild, they already gave us these pre-cut pieces. I am just going to assume that they are at least 27 inches wide by the width of fabric. And they also gave us the accent piece, which is nine inches by the width of fabric. And then I'm adding in a strip that I have already pressed in half. It is a two inch by width of fabric. And as you can see here, I have already pressed and folded this so that my wrong sides are together. But on this fabric, it really doesn't matter, but you want to fold with wrong sides together. So those are your measurements. You can make these pillowcases any size you want. On this accent piece, you can cut it larger. You can have it 11 inches if you want a longer pillowcase. So you have some choices as well there. I am going to have to work around my camera. So it's going to be a little bit awkward here because I'm trying to demo this. You, of course, will not have the entire strip inside of the camera lens at all times. So you're going to have to bear with me there. But the first step is we want to put our accent piece down so we have the right side of our flap fabric facing up and we just want to pin this onto we just want to pin this to one edge of this panel And we will do that all the way down the strip. And I am going to leave a little space here. And you can see here where my accent strip is longer than my pillow top fabric. And that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it for right now. I'm not going to worry with that until we get to the next few steps. So right now I just have some random pinning going on. And I will be adding more pins in between this. But we're going to be doing some pinning steps, and so I want to do that first. So now we're going to take our main fabric, and we are going to place it where the right sides are down. And when I place it right side down, all of my salvages are running along this side. And I will just take out and remove the pins that I previously put in and repin. Now if you want, you could go ahead and just use a 1 8 inch seam and sew your accent to your pillow top fabric, but I'm just trying to do this in the fastest way possible. So I am just going to sew it all in one step.
and again I'm not worried about what's ending down here I'm just going to pin until I don't have any more fabric layers to pin together so now I have all three of those sections pinned together I'm going to see if I can move my camera over to the other side and see if it will work. If not, I'll be right back on this side. <laughs> so I am now on the opposite side of my table. You still cannot see the entire pillowcase in the screen. But what I wanted to do was show you that you're just pulling your pillowcase fabric up. And you're going to actually roll this into the middle. You don't have to be really picky about this part. So we're just rolling that up. And then when we get it to a certain point, we just want to pull this piece up and over. But you do not want to catch the fabric part that you rolled over. You just want to pull this piece up and repin. And you want to do that all the way down your hot dog is what this is called because of how you roll it. And I hope that the video camera is showing this. And now at this point, I want to go in and add more pins. I left them spaced just so that I wouldn't have to remove all of the pins. But I do need to add some more pins to make sure that I sew all of the layers. So now I have the entire thing pinned and I'm hoping that you can see that. And I am now ready to go and stitch one quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, one half of an inch, whatever you're comfortable with. On this pillowcase, it really doesn't matter. I'm just ready to go and stitch. I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch down this entire length and then I'll be right back. I'm back with my sewn strip set. Now, here comes the magic. You have to pull this piece out of this hot dog and so you have to gradually do that because you've got this seam running along here so you just gradually do that just pulling it through almost there okay so now the next step is I am actually going to go to my urn and then I am going to press this top portion flat and I will do that and I will come right back I have my pieces pressed flat now if I was making this pillowcase for me I probably would go ahead and stitch an edge stitch along the edge of my top of my pillowcase that way I don't have to worry about it separating at the top but since it's a charity quilt, I've got another one of these to do and I just want to proceed and get them done. I'm going to do that. The next thing I want to do now is I want to square up this edge here. Because remember we had some extra space available over here. So I want to make sure that I square all of this up. So I'm just going to fold this pillowcase. Okay. 
and I'm actually going to square up both sides because I have salvages on my other side. So now I just want to square up this edge. All right, so now you have a couple of options here on how you may want to put this pillowcase together. You could put this pillowcase together, right sides together. Like so. So you would sew along this bottom seam here and then you would come back and sew along this top seam. However, I like to do French closed pillowcases so that way you don't have any raveled seams. So what I'm actually going to do is take my pillowcase and put it wrong sides together. And I'm just going to start with the bottom first. And you really don't have to do it to the bottom of the case, but like I said, I just think it makes the case last longer if you've got the seams enclosed. So I'm going to go stitch from this edge to here. I'm going to back stitch at each one of those intersections and then I'll be back for the next step. Here I have sewn my seam and I used like an eighth of an inch seam just to do that seam with. And the reason is because I'm now going to turn it right sides together. Make sure I get that corner out. And now I'm going to go sew a full quarter inch seam. If you're nervous about catching any of your seams or if your seams are not lined up correctly, you can use like a 3 8 inch of a seam. So my step is I am going to go press this flat and then come back and sew one quarter of an inch and I'll be right back. Here's my pillowcase. I have now sewn one quarter of an inch along this edge. And so you can see where I have a seam line here. And when I double did a seam, it enclosed that seam inside of the stitching that I just did. And that's what's called a French seam. So before I turn it, you can see where I do not have raw edges here on the inside. And I also have finished seams on the outside. So that is your French seam. Again, I will go back and press this in place for my next step. Notice that I now have my bag turned again where I have wrong sides together. When you have your accent piece, you do want to make sure that you line these pieces up so that they are in the right position. You definitely want to put pins here to hold these edges together so that they don't shift. So I'm going to go again and sew a seam right along here that's less than one quarter of an inch. So here is my side seam. I've sewn it wrong sides together and I tried to stay within an eighth of an inch. Sometimes I got at a quarter of an inch. So when I flip this one out, this time I'm going to sew three eighths of an inch just to make sure that I catch all of the raw edges. So now I just want to flip this pillowcase wrong sides out and your fabrics are now right sides together. Make sure you use some kind of pointing tool to get your corners out. And then I am going to go back to the iron again. I'm going to press this same flat before I go stitch it down. And I will come back and show you the finished project. So here is my sewn seam. I did do like three eighths of an inch seam on this. And now when I turn this bag right side out, notice that with the hot dog method, it prevents the raw edges here. I have enclosed all of my raw edges along the bottom. 
I have enclosed all of the raw edges on the sides and when you flip it out you just have a nice neat pillowcase that will not ravel threads on the inside which is one of the reasons that I like this method and of course I will make sure that I get my corners turned out but this is one of those things that I'm not going to do that right now because I'm going to make another pillowcase and then we need to have them washed before we turn them in. So once I wash them, I will do a final press on these pillowcases and I am just going to go ahead and end this video here because I'm trying to get it up today. But want to say have a joyous holiday season. Let's see how many days I can put a video up in a row. See you later. Bye-bye.